Okay, well, at some point, I turned the switch off that was charging the camera and I did not turn it back on. So I don't know when it cut out. So apologies for that. Let's try and continue with no further hiccups. So, felting the body. This is where we were, well, we were roughly around here somewhere, hopefully. I had been looking up regularly, but the second that you think you're all fine and dandy and you don't look up is when a hiccup happens. So let's get back on track. And I don't think you've missed anything too much, just me doing this. But here we go, let's continue. So getting this brown on the body. And I guess I'll find out during editing exactly where that hiccup took place. And if it was mid-dialogue, which it probably was. So let's try and get back on track. We have a little head. And we have a big body, which looks like a big head. But it is really firming up now, which is nice. So I feel we are doing something right at least here. So we're going for those deeper ones at this point, the deeper stabs. While bearing in mind to keep the body shape. So focusing quite heavily on what would be the waist keep that nice and cinched in and then we'll go a little bit lighter around the upper torso and fairly tight around the bottom region. <clears throat> but he's definitely feeling like we're doing something right. we've got this done we'll have another look and see if there's any major patches of white like there is a little bit around the nether region here so we'll probably put a little bit more there and maybe a touch up here we'll see once we've done needling this top bit And again, we're going for those faster, deeper ones. To firm it all up. And to make sure all this surface brown has bound with the, we'll call it the padding. The inner skeleton of such. And some other ideas as far as content goes. I'll be doing things that I know and things that I don't know. So I think that'll make for quite interesting. Learning something afresh, like this, for example. As well as doing some things that I know relatively well to very well. So I can teach you some things. We can learn together with other things. And you lot can teach me as well. As I say, that's where the comments are going to be a beautiful little zone. And also it's like a suggestion area. People have something they'd really want me to try. So when I've been to the shops lately, I've been having a look-see. I even down like the kiddies craft aisle. So there's lots of things down there that don't seem too arty. You know, so they're aimed at kids, but they are. Um, and they'd just be quite fun to see what you could do with them. Like one of the things I saw 
is, um, and I've seen these when I was a child, you know, they've been going around for quite a while, and that's those little fossil dig kits, where you get a slab of essentially sand that's been compacted, and you make like you're an archaeologist and you dig out the bones, and then you put it all together. But what would be cool apart from that is what you could do with it after you've put it together. Like the one that I most recently saw was um, a Triceratops skeleton. And we have Halloween coming up, so there's going to be lots of fun things we can do then. Um, so I thought, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, we got the dig kit, dug the Triceratops out, and then started to build its body up. So we could have some bone on show, some muscle on show, some sinew. We could even try our hand at making some little innards spilling out. Make him a bit of a zombie triceratops. So yeah, and also um, I saw like a little girls. So it, was it was definitely aimed at little girls. Um, a crystal making kit. Now sometimes those crystal making kits are just salt, um, which is fine. They're fun to have a little play around with. But this one had, uh, I think it was some sort of sulfate in it. So I was like, oh, I've not played with that before. That might be fun to have a little play with. And then we can use any successful crystals some sculptures, which will again be rather cool, I think. And plus it gives you ideas the more you look around. You haven't actually got to walk away with anything, but you'll get an idea. Right, that is feeling really good now. It's feeling better than the head. The head's still quite easy to squish. The body's getting a bit firmer. So I think, yeah, what we'll do here is we'll just do a couple of little bits where it's a little pale. We'll go back to the head, firm it up a little bit, and then we'll look at putting the legs together. So let's just get a tiny bit, tiny bit more go over these pale patches, so like around here, we'll do that little patch first and then we'll come in down there, so let's give it a few lighter, lighter stabs to begin with just to bind that little bit that we've added. So it doesn't fly away the second we move our hands. And then we'll go in for the deeper, faster ones. Let's move that over for a second. And this does have a really, really nice feel to it. Let's see if you're quite sensory oriented, which I definitely am. You'll love the feel of this, it's very tactile. I'll have to find somewhere for these little guys. Well, this one little guy, I've got another one with the intent of, you know, the first one perhaps not going so well. I could learn from the first one, be better with the second one. But this is a very versatile media to use. Because you can keep going back over it and reworking it. Which is brilliant. So if anyone does try one of these little kits at home, you won't necessarily need to buy two. 
you know, a fail safe. I mean, I got two as well because I really, really wanted to do my girls, but they just only had them in brown. And my little girl is all black and my big girl is black and white. But after having a go at this and feeling somewhat more confident, I can always then go out and buy the colours I want and make my little girls. If we can add that next little bit around the bottom and then we'll look at doing oh yeah we're going to tighten the head up a tiny bit so it's just around there We'll tighten the head up a little bit. And then make some legs. And then we will have a look at, I don't know whether we'll put the face on next. Or start to attach it all together and then put the little detail on. So we're going to give it a little face and a little collar. But we'll see about the collar. I we might have these little, might be a little free roamer. camera hiccups. Good, we want to keep those to a minimum. And you'll see how we attach everything. Now this is the beauty with felt, or when you're felting. You don't need any glue. You just need your felting bits and your felting needles. Because how this can get attached to this is by doing the exact same thing as attaching this to this. The needle will bind the fibres for you. Which I think is really cool. It's a no glue product, which is nice. Right. I'm quite happy with the body as it is at the moment. So we can always go at the very end with any excess we got left. Go around and uh, touch up any bits that could do with a bit more touch up. So let's work the head a little bit more. With our newfound confidence in what we're doing. Trying to remember to keep that shape. For the muzzle. We don't want skull to be bigger than uh, to be smaller than the muzzle or to get too close to it
I think we've got a nice little head shape still. I'll try and bring that muslin a little bit more. These could make for nice little ornaments for your shelf or nice little handmade gifts. They're really sweet. You can make any animal you like, you can make in fact anything you like out of felt. It's very versatile. I think once you've got the knack for it, the world is your oyster, your felted oyster. So that's looking good, so nice little body, nice little head, and they're going to go together like that. You can even angle it, I might even angle it so it's a little playful. So let's pop those up there for now. Now we want to work the legs. So doing a similar thing with the body, we're going to pull a little piece off. We're going to make some sausage shapes. And then the little piece that we've pulled off, we're going to use to wrap around to bring it together a little bit. So let's start. getting some sausage shapes put together. We're going to be somewhat more careful here because smaller space, more chance of getting your finger. So we're going to go slower to begin with. I'm going to take it off there just for a second so we can see a bit better. White on white isn't very clear. Let's try. Rolling it like a little sausage as we go and see if that helps. Starting to get a little sausage shape. We'll try very carefully to not prick myself. So think, if ever there were a chance, even though we were going faster with the bigger bits, our fingers were much further away from the area being worked with a needle. So there was much less chance of us getting ourselves, even though we did a couple of times. Absolutely nothing 
nothing that drew blood, so it would work. Didn't have any red stains on it anywhere. Right, so to begin with, I think we're going to aim to get these three bits like this one. And then we'll look at tightening them up when we add the brown. So that's what we're going to go for. So let's see if we can recreate that. That is. Now they definitely don't have to be perfect when you're working this small. They'll tidy up as we add the brown. We just want to try and get them all roughly the same sort of size. We don't have one leg way longer than the rest. These little bits are going to definitely take more shape as we add the brown. They are rather skeletal right now, so it was more apt referring to as a skeleton earlier on than I realised. How are we looking? Okay, they will be all right to start. So as long as they're roughly the same shape, that one does feel a little bit denser than that one, but that's okay. So as long as they're roughly the same shape, same length, very creaky chair, because I'm reaching for my tea. Try and bring that closer so I don't creak so much. All right, let's try that again. Let's get a bit of a sausage. And use this to wrap around. It does definitely seem to help if you are able to give it a little bit of a pinch. So I find if I just have it there like that, it, 
it doesn't seem to, or even if I'm holding it loose, it doesn't seem to work as well. So I give it a little bit of a squeeze. As much as you feel comfortable and confident with, you want to squeeze it so much that you're definitely going to prick yourself. But enough so that you can feel those fibres crisscrossing with each other. I think we've got another little sausage. A little bit bigger, so we might make those the back ones. We'll keep him there and then we'll see what happens with this one. And then we'll try and pair them up. You know, for which ones suit a better pair. So if you've got two that are slightly bigger, they may as well be the back pair. And then if you've got two, if they're all the same, it won't really matter. Obviously, if you've got two slightly bigger ones, you'll have two slightly smaller ones. So let's see what we get. This one feels like this one's going to be thinner as well. We can always use the brown to compensate. So if we're a little bit too far out. We can always use the brown to bring one up a little bit. We've still got a nice amount of brown left to work with. Let's see what we got. Yeah, these two are definitely a bit bigger, so we'll keep those as the back legs. Hold that there for a moment, and we'll keep these as the front. So let's get some brown and start to colour up these legs. I'm going to try doing a little over the top first and then wrap around. Okay, let's see what we get. Much like the body, we're going to try and do longer, looser ones to begin with, just to get that brown to make an initial connection with the white. And then we'll go around tightening it up. Let's have a cow. 
looking to definitely be taking a little bit of shape I managed to get myself again but I think it's all surface ones so far I've been really lucky not to draw blood let's try and get the tips tightened up a bit So let's say this is where you'll probably get yourself most. I've definitely made a groove. <laughs> Might flip it over, see if we can work an area that we haven't grooved in so much. Made a bit of a bed on the other side. Let's start at the corner here. I'm still trying to use my fingers as a brake to stop myself from going so far. This definitely seems to be firming up a bit. I think it's going to take a little bit more time only because it's so much smaller. And we're trying to be a bit more careful so as not to get our fingers. It's definitely taking shape now. We can afford it to be a little bit looser up the top if we pick one end, like this can be the foot end and this can be the end that attaches to the body. So let's see if we can make a little bit of definition here. By cinching it in a little bit if we can. Getting in the way. That was a prick and a half. Still don't think we drew blood yet, which is good. It just, that one stung. So I think that was en route. En route to drawing blood if I didn't pull it back quick enough. But I'm getting quite happy with The shape of the foot there. So we want it to come up a little bit. So we're gonna try our best anyway. To create a bit of a foot shape. Which we're sort of getting. We've only got to try and mimic it with the others now. Right, let's pop 
pop that one aside just for now just try and keep it so we're at that point where we want to be aware of what we've got left how far it needs to go so we're just going to try and mimic that mimic this one to that one so I'm going to put a piece let's try wrapping it right around like that and then a slightly thinner piece Try and pull it a little snug as we're going. It's a bit wonky donky at the moment, but that's okay. Let's see how this works. So again, with the loose ones to begin with, or I say the loose ones, the not so rapid ones just to get all those fibers to start sitting with one another and we'll look at speeding it up and trying to shape it to match the first one And do the same this end. That was another stinger. Again, I don't think I've drawn anything yet. But I've definitely got sore fingertips. Let's try to. Speed up a little bit, not stab ourselves so much. I'm getting a bit of shape now. we'll make this end the end that's attached into the body so we'll leave it a tiny bit looser we'll try to keep moving around so we don't end up making a little bed where it's not really doing much So we want to start to form this is a bit of a pore. All my days. I knew we'd be pricking ourselves so much more at this point. 
And then I'm going to try my best not to F and Jeff. Sometimes when you get a prick out of nowhere, an F or a Jeff pops out as well. I'm going to try and refrain from doing that in case I get any younger viewers or mums like to watch this with their little ones. I don't want to be the person that gives them bad habits. So I'm going to try my utmost not to F and Jeff when I get pricked. Right, let's try and form a little paw shape. I'm going to try and cinch in a little bit. Where the ankle would be. We're getting there. Just be two more to go after this. How are we looking compared to that one? Probably do with being a little bit tighter. So let's try our best. bad. I think we'll keep that where it is for now. Let's try and do the back ones. So let's try that method again. We'll try this up and around. This piece round and round. Let's 
let's try that. See again, I don't know if you can see that, but we've made a bit of a well. So we'll try again from over here. Just leave that there for one second. 